If you've been around this world long enough, you know that there are people within it that don't exactly adhere to the laws of reality, meaning that through natural or uncommon circumstances, they can do things that are beyond the bounds of an average human. And I'm not even talking about technically, about super geniuses or savants, I'm looking into those who seemingly are superhuman when we all know that they are indeed simply human. One of the biggest examples of this are monks. Here now are 20 superpowers that monks have in real life. Number 20. Lama Itagalov. A monk started meditating and told people to wake him up in 75 years. This is what happened next. Some of you are far within your rights not to believe the superpowers that people claim they have, as many who make these claims are indeed ones who have either seen science on their side or think it's a con. But when it comes to monks, there are few that have done things that quite frankly boggle the mind in a way that neither science or true con artistry could define, and now we see that in Lama Itagalov. Dashi Dorzo Itagalov Lama, as a young boy, had just one desire. He wanted to become a monk. Eventually, at the age of just 16, he went out and began his training at the local monastery and over time became the Lama, or leader of, a group of Buddhist monks. At the age of 75, he told his followers that he was ready to die, but his followers didn't want him to. And so, the Lama called them together and had everyone meditate, which included himself. And when he was meditating, he passed on. Or did he? Because his last will and testament states two different causes. The first was that he would be buried in the position that he died in, which was the lotus position of meditation, and secondly, that after a certain set of years, the body would be checked on. And that's where the superpowers come in, because despite him having died in 1927, his body was shown not to have any signs of decay. To be clear, there are things happening to the body, as his face and skin would show, but at this at this point in time, nearly 100 years after his death, he should be nothing but a skeleton, and instead he looks like he's still meditating. As such, some monks believe that he is alive and just meditating in a deep state of nirvana. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Shi Lelang. There are various ways that these monks can obtain their superpowers, but the most consistent one is that many people have documented over the years that monks often use their time at various monasteries to train in ways that can improve their body's abilities beyond the norm, and they dedicate themselves to this training more than any other humans out there. Shi La Lang is a great example of this. He was a man who was inspired by kung fu movies, something that I can relate to, and became a monk in order to be like them. As such, he decided and to dedicate himself to specific kinds of training, which included ones that would help him to walk on water. And no, he is not actually Jesus Christ and cannot actually walk on water. Rather, he places a string of boards upon the surface of a lake and then would run across the boards at such a quick fashion that he wouldn't sink. Rather, he would race across them and basically walk on water. How did he achieve the ability to do this? Well, he would walk with iron bars on his feet. By his own admission, it does take a lot of focus, balance, and skill to make it all work. And when he did his record-breaking attempt of doing this walk on water for over 120 meters, he said that he's likely the only person in China, if not the world, to have accomplished it. And lest you think that this is not impressive, how about you go set up some boards and see if you can walk on them without instantly sinking? Then watch this man do it in a long distance sprint. Number 18. The Rock Climber. It may sound not so impressive at first, but don't worry, a twist is coming. A certain man named Vung would be visiting a temple in the capital city of Laos, where he had to climb up a rope. To be clear about this, he was on a mountain slope, and thus the rock was to help him get a better grip and not necessarily risk falling back down. Not surprisingly, Vung had to stop during the ascent in order to catch his breath and get a little bit of rest, and when he did, a monk just happened to pass him by. And by pass him by, I mean that he literally walked up the slope of the mountain, which as the footage shows was at a steep angle, with nothing to support him. 
He also had no shoes on, which meant that he was walking up this mountain in literal bare feet without any complaints or whimpers. Vung then pans the camera to himself, showing the long rope that he's clinging to, all while watching the gravity-defying monk reach to the top. It is indeed an impressive feat. Now, as some would comment on the video, there's a caveat or two here, but it's not one that might mitigate what we're seeing. For example, one person would note that he has bare feet in his walk because it gives him more grip, and it would, but it'd also cause a whole lot of pain for your feet, and that would be bad. Another one notes that he walked at an angle to counteract the incline, which is also true, but that would only help so much. No matter how you look at the footage, I doubt that many of you out there would be willing to try this feat by this monk. Number 17. Shi Yong Kang the next one you might think is fake, but the monk in the video, Shi Yong Kang, actually does a good job of making it clear that he's honestly breaking things that are really tough and thus making his feet incredibly impressive. Because as you're seeing him, he's able to break rocks with his bare hands and even just two fingers, as he shows in dramatic fashion at the end of the video. And to prove the rocks are real, he has them break bricks in order to showcase their toughness. That's a nice way of showing off what he's about to do. So why do we believe that this is real? Well, because we've seen both monks and non-monks do this in various competition. You might have even seen stuff like this done in various martial arts competitions due to how it's a sign of their training to focus on breaking the bricks or stones that are placed in front of them. What this really boils down to is a kind of concentration. Monks, and martial artists in general, train themselves to focus their body's energy, as well as having the right technique, in order to break whatever's in front of them. And if they do it the right way, it works, and if they do it the wrong way, it can be hilarious to see them hurt their hands, but for those who succeed, well, you just have to cheer them on. And you can see why this is going on with Shi Yong Kang. He doesn't break the stones on the first attempt, as he has to have the right pressure point and technique. Just so you know though, while it is impressive, there are fakes out there, and you should never try this at home unless you've had training yourself. Number 16. Wang Lutai now here's another one that you may think can't possibly be real, and even though it hurts for me to watch, it is real, and apparently it's a discipline that has been taught for about 300 years for reasons that are unknown to man or science. This is called Iron Crotch Kung Fu, and Monk Wang Lu Tao is one of the people left in the world that knows its martial arts style. Now before you get any super disgusting ideas on what it is, it is a defensive technique. Mainly, men are very susceptible to getting hit in the um, unmentionables, and so the iron crotch technique is done in order to help prepare them for the blow and thus make their crotch a shield, I kid you not, all so that it can take damage and won't be affected. And as you're watching the video, and no doubt wincing throughout, you can see that the technique does appear to work. As long as you push yourself, you'll feel great, said Wang. I highly doubt that, and no, I'm not going to make the obvious Wang joke. I'm just trying to have some integrity here. Oh, and as you're seeing, his training technique is literally getting hit in his solar plexus repeatedly with a massive log. That's not the only way that you can do it. Another master of the technique has someone hit that area with a sledgehammer. I'm not going to say don't try this at home here, because quite frankly, if you do this to yourself, you probably just Deserve what comes with it. Number 15. The Boiling Monk. Now here's one that honestly could be fake, and some have actually tried to debunk it, so I'll tell you about both sides of the story. First, with the monk, there are several monks who have gone viral online because they do something in which they're put into a vat of oil, one that just so happens to be above a place that can be lit on fire, and then the fire gets lit. All the oil begins to boil, and the monk inside the vat just sits there praying and not reacting at all. Naturally, this has gotten many people to wonder what's actually going on, and that includes whether this is a feat of magic or a trick via science. 
In terms of the latter, I can say that there are scientists who actually believe that this is fake for very basic reasons, and you can't tell just how hot the oil that the monk is sitting in is, and that matters for a key reason, because while the fire is obviously real as people are watching it burn, how it's affecting everything else is a different matter. As one scientist would note, it doesn't look like the oil is actually boiling, which means it could be warm, but not to a temperature that could harm the monk overall. The vat that he's in could also be shielding the heat from the fire so that it can't actually burn him. Without seeing it done live and examining the temperature of the oil itself, it is hard to tell. But if it was a true feat of a monk's skill, it would be very impressive. Number 14. Swami Sivananda now, if you were to put a generalization on the abilities of monks, you could very easily say that their goal is to push the body to places that it couldn't go naturally. We see this with their strength, speed, pain tolerance, and more, but for Swami Sivananda, he apparently put this to another path, all in order to make himself live longer. Because according to him, he was actually born in 1896, and so thus, by 2016, he was 120 years old. That didn't make him the oldest man ever but it did put him close to the moniker. The sprightly monk puts his longevity down as a disciplined life of yoga, having no sex at all, and bland food. Now, I'm sure some of you may be fine with at least two of those things, which two would be up to you, obviously. When asked about his longevity, he simply noted that he lives and eats simply, and that's enough for him to live longer. I have no desire, no disease. No depression, no tension. So, is that the case? Did this monk find out the secret to long life? Well, we honestly can't say. Not for the reasons you're probably thinking. Rather, I can't say it because he is well and truly a sample of one. He's lived this way, and that's impressive, but that doesn't mean it's the way to live longer, and that's not how it works. In fact, there are all sorts of ways that you can try to live longer, and while his path might be one of them, it's not the sole way. There have been many people who have lived well beyond 100 just by living their daily lives. There was even one woman who lived to be over 100 while smoking and drinking, and those are things that are supposed to make you die quicker. So again, it's one path and not the path. Number 13. Pralad Yani the next one you can very fairly be skeptical about because it's about a monk named Pralad Yani who apparently had a superpower in the form of faith. According to him, he was able to get such a connection with the goddess known as Amba that he doesn't need to eat or drink and apparently didn't do so for 40 years of his life. That's kind of frightening on many, many levels. But wait, there's more! And it comes in the form of a twist. When he made these claims in public, naturally someone came out to challenge him. and. In a test that was conducted in front of actual doctors, they would watch him for 15 days, and he didn't eat a single thing or drink while they watched. He was studied for 15 days, taking no food or water, and doctors noted that anyone who doesn't take water for up to seven days would surely die. But he did not die. In fact, he lived on, and yet there's still more. He apparently didn't have to use the bathroom at any point during that 15 days, which is supposed to be impossible given how your body actually works. A doctor the doctor even noted that if someone had that kind of issue, they would probably be on dialysis, and yet this man was not. And so, a lot more studies were to be done about him, not the least of which was because if he was for real, he could unlock the mysteries of life in his own way. Though again, this is something that hasn't been proven as of yet, and thus showed to be taken with a bit of skepticism. Number 12. The Pain of Glass this is a curious one because there are some who believe that this trick is 100% real due to how monks do it almost all the time when they're performing their feats of skill. And yet, we have scientists who have tried this and felt that it was fake. So here's how it goes. One monk holds up a pane of glass, and on one side of the glass is a balloon. Another monk stands on the opposite side of the glass with nothing but a needle, and he then hurls that needle at the glass, and the needle goes through it, popping the balloon in spectacular fashion. 
It's a neat trick, and one that's been studied by many over the years, and the biggest ones to do this was Mythbusters. As they tried to complete this task themselves, they couldn't even do it. They even brought in a Major League Baseball pitcher who could hurl baseballs over 100 miles per hour, and he couldn't accomplish it. They tried more thin needles, more thick ones, and various variations, all in order to test and get things to work. The MLB pitcher actually got the needle to shatter upon the glass due to how hard he threw it, so if it is fake, how are the monks accomplishing this? It's believed that they're using both sleight of hand and really thin glass, though obviously nobody can say that for sure. This is one that you could try for yourself, just make sure that you have some protection on, because needles can fly back at you if they bounce off of glass. Number 11. Temperature Control Believe it or not, this is a superpower that we not only know is true, but we've seen non-monks do it in their very own way. In Tibet, there's a group of monks who train rigorously in the art of meditation, and they do so at frigid temperatures. But that's where the superpower comes in, because that meditation is having them focus not on something outward, but on something inward being their core body temperature. Yes, they're able to control how their body stays warm and how it can resist the effects of the cold. The room that they train in, for example, is only 40 degrees Fahrenheit, making it cold by default. Then, as they reach their state of meditation, wet blankets are placed upon them in order to further make them cold, and yet they never flinch. The technique itself is known as Tum Mo, and it's been studied and even partaken in by doctors and non-monks. In fact, a very famous endurance man known as Wim Hof uses these techniques, all in order to dive into freezing waters without any issue, as well as run through deserts without getting overheated or even needing water. While it may sound basic, it is absolutely a case of mind over matter. These monks and others are pushing everything else out of their minds, all so that they can have better control over their bodies. That especially includes stress, which can get your body to do various things on its own. And yes, you could learn this technique yourself. It's just going to take time and patience in order to master it. Number 10. Marathon Monks in Japan, there are those known as marathon monks who take on a spiritual challenge of endurance in the pursuit of enlightenment, which is something that most monks around the world seek to have in one form or another. And while this may not seem like a superpower, this is not your typical marathon, and the stakes to complete or fail this task are a bit higher than you may be expecting, such as how you have to do various tasks for seven years, and if you fail at any point, you commit honorable suicide. Less than 50 50 have completed it, and many that failed are found in unmarked graves on the mountain. For the first three years, the monks have to run 30 kilometers, or 18.6 miles a day, for 100 consecutive days. For the fourth and fifth year, the monks have to run 30 kilometers for 200 days, and on and on it goes. They have to wear special gear, they can't do anything like drink or smoke, and there are more rules even after that, but if they do survive, well, they end up becoming a living saint. Number 9. Young and Flexible the next one's going to hurt just to look at, but you'll need to endure through it because I have to as well. Here we have a group of young monks who are going through a very special and painful kind of training, and in this case, it's being able to test the flexibility by putting their bodies around a pole and holding themselves in rather awkward positions. To be clear on something, they're not natural contortionists, they're simply monks who have been trained to move their bodies beyond the normal way. In fact, the ones in this picture had apparently only been there a year. I'm going to move on because I don't even want to think about trying that out with my body. Number 8. Zhao Rui I'm going to scream about this one. <clears throat> don't try this at home, because in this case, a monk by the name of Zhao Rui is someone who has a special talent that has shown the world over and over again, and yet no one can believe it. Mainly, he's able to put an electric drill to his head, turn it on, and it doesn't break his skin. He's admitted that in the past, when he does this feat in the incorrect way, he has hurt himself, but he's done this in front of cameras and reporters without any issues. How this is possible? Well, he says that due to his training and focus, he's done other tricks as well to try and showcase just how strong and endurant that his body is. If it is for real or a trick, it might just be up for you to decide. Just remember, don't try it at home. Number 7. Iron Shirt 
I've already shown you the iron crotch. Now we'll do one that many of you honestly be up for, the iron shirt. Simply put, this is the training style for those who are aiming to shore up their core body so that they can withstand all kinds of damage. The belief amongst the monks who do this technique is that they are directing energy from other parts of their body to the one being affected the chest, stomach, and so on, and thus are reinforcing it to ensure that damage is kept to a minimum. In the Shaolin version of Iron Shirt, the practitioner would do things such as lying on a stump or supporting tablets of granite on the chest with the goal of toughening the body. It is hard work, but the payoff could be very helpful in a fight. Number 6. Light Body this one's a bit more in the nature of finesse. The light body technique is defined as a way of strengthening the internal, but in more layman's terms, it's a way to make yourself feel and act as light as a feather, so you can do things that people with your same weight would do, but without the training cannot. This is said to be an incredibly hard technique to get down by the monk's own words. You can't rush into it as it's a true mental challenge as well as one of energy. But if you are able to make it through, you can do things like rest on a branch without fear of falling off or even walk around the edges of a basket with ease. Number 5. Monk Levitation Levitation is indeed a superpower, as many comic book characters would tell you, but can people do it? Well, the better question is, can they actually do it, or is there a trick involved? Most times it is a trick. You might see street performers doing this by making it appear as though they're levitating, when in point of fact, they're sitting on something that's obscured by their clothing and props. To be clear, there is a Buddhist teaching that's said to help someone achieve true levitation, yet there is a catch. According to Buddhist precepts, a monk cannot show his supernormal powers, such as levitation, before a lay person. One who shows it to you is actually breaking the precepts, so you either have to become a monk in order to witness it, or find a lay person who has supernormal powers to witness it for themselves. And thus, no one can really prove that it actually happens. Number 4. The Sixth Sense now here's one that many people believe in for various reasons, but in monk teachings, it's one where you have the true cognitive awareness of all that's happening around you. It doesn't always happen, as there needs to be a shift in the field in order for you to pick it up, but if you are truly in tune with all of your senses, you'll be able to unlock it for yourself. This may sound vague and convenient, but again, there are plenty of people who believe in the concept of the sixth sense. After all, there are people who have felt or detected things that their natural five senses were not able to pick up. It's up to you if you determine to believe it or not. Number 3. Iron Bull the iron bowl technique is kind of the composite of all the other iron techniques that I've talked about. It's one that's meant to strengthen the external of the body and to focus all the power of the yang side of balance into you. This can be used to both strengthen you and make you more endurant to strikes. It's said that if you are truly able to master it, you can take blows from the immortals. Though, given that nobody can find one of those immortals just anywhere, it's going to be really hard to test if you're trying to figure out if you're doing it right. But the monks, well, they believe it, and so they train in it. Number 2. The Bed of Nails This one I can explain via science. The bed of nails trick is when a monk or a street performer goes and rests on a bed of nails and then usually has something put upon them while they're on that bed to show that they're not taking any damage. The funny thing is, they're really not. Not if they're doing it right, but that should be impossible given that the nails are sharp, right? Except it's not impossible at all. It's all about distribution of weight. If you put your body against a bed of nails, it won't be the most comfortable thing ever, but the distribution of your weight upon them makes it so that no one nail is pressing against your body with more force than the others. As such, you can rest against it and not be hurt. All you have to do to make sure of this is that you have enough nails to rest against. Number 1. Iron Throat 
Finally, we have one last one that seems like a trick, but the monks prove that it's not. The iron throat technique is where they go to great lengths to try and strengthen their throats. But why? Well, it's so that they can withstand blows and even bend spears with just their throats. As you can see here, the monks are able to put the spears against cars, and just using their throats, they actually bend them. The training for this apparently is intense, given that the throat is quite vulnerable, but the results do indeed speak for themselves, and if you don't believe in it, well, then I don't blame you. That's all from the realm of monks who seemingly have superpowers. What did you think of their particular set of skills that they can all do? Do you wish that you could do some of these things, or do you have another monk or video featuring one that has another set of powers? Be sure to let me know all about it in the comments section down below. Check out the other cool things that are showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.